as you know, the communists, the atheists, the Jews, and the humanists have made a common cause of keeping prayer out of the government schools. It is difficult to say whom to blame more, these so-called liberals who have been able to exert enough pressure upon the Supreme Court that they can get such a ruling, or the stupid Christians who allow such insane rulings to take place without bringing the Supreme Court justices to impeachment. An eighth grader would never find in the Constitution any prohibition of prayer in the schools. Our purpose, however, is not to inveigh against either the enemies of religion in this country nor the Supreme Court in all of its laughable glory, but rather to say something with regard to the absolute necessity of children to pray. It is a fact that if the children were to pray only during school hours, it would hardly be worth the bother. And of course, I'm speaking to you young people here, those who are in their teens and those who have not yet got to their teens and those of you who have only recently escaped that miserable state. And I am saying to you that you must learn to pray. You imagine that you have great need you imagine that you are a part of an oppressed people, that you need money, that you need liberty, that you need to be appreciated. And I tell you that what you need more than these things is to pray to be at home with the idea of prayer and to have a regimen in your life of prayer. You parents know how it is with young people. When they get about 13 or 14, they begin to get rest restless for their driver's license. One of their most desperate needs during those months, which to them are interminable, is wheels so that they can go where they have to go and so they can pick up whomever they need to see so that they can be in demand and to be thought of as well to do. But I tell you, my dear young people, you need prayer more than you need either to go or to have the wherewithal to go. I observe how our young ladies, hardly have they begun to develop than they need to begin to paint themselves with all kinds of cosmetics. And they have to make a great fuss over their hair. And they, of course, have to have a sizable wardrobe of clothes, some of which are so small that you would imagine that they would be free. But they're not free at all, so it turns out. But I tell you, young ladies, more than all these accoutrements of your beauty, you need to pray. It is probably a failure on the part of your 
parents that you do not pray as much as you need to, but I think your parents, because they have to herd you about and trouble you so constantly, they have to leave some things to the Spirit of God, and I guess they want to leave some things to the priest. So they probably do not hound you so much about, do you pray? One easily gets the idea about teenagers that their religion is a kind of begrudging thing, nigh on to an unwilling thing as if it is a part of that oppression which they must endure until they can get loose, until they can shuck their chains. My greatest desire here would not be to tell you that prayer is a duty, but to remind you that it is the very secret of liberation a freedom of soul, and it is the entrance to peace. Prayer, as you will recall, the Catechism tells us, is the lifting of the mind and the heart to God. And I accentuate the word lifting, which suggests that when you pray, you are really going to step up. You're going to step indeed out of the ephemeralities and the materialities which so involve you and which so fascinate you. When you pray, you enter into God's spiritual existence and you are alone with him. The glory of prayer is that it is effortless because God is all present. You have your existence in God and you derive your very being from God so that he is where you are always, in the depths of the night, in your loneliness, in your desperate needs, in your sorrows and in your impatience. Almighty God is there. The glory of prayer is that he who is most powerful, he who can do all things, you never have to wait in line for. He stands at constant attention, almost excited if you give him so much as a word or a moment's attention. And he stands, he in all his power and majesty, anxious that you would even notice his existence or that he is there. And he is positively jubilant if you have as much as a thank you for him or a kind word. We might ask why you do not pray or why it is so difficult, why it is almost untypical for young people to pray. And I suspect that it is because young people are beset with two sins, two kinds of vices. I would not suggest that you have a monopoly on these vices, but among others, you are inclined to be terribly proud. You imagine that you need less than you do. And what you want to do is prove that you need less than others want to provide, such as supervision or warnings or directions. But when you go to God, naturally, you're not proud. That may be, as I say, why you are reluctant to enter into this conversation. When you go to God, you are aware that you are truly small. You're not inclined to do as the Pharisee in today's Gospel was much inclined to do. He went to the temple not to pray, but to boast. 
to congratulate God on him. I doubt if any of you young people are inclined to boast before God and this is what you need to do. Not to boast in front of God but to go into his presence so that you will see him as he sees you. Or I should say so that you would see yourself through his eyes so that you will see that you are truly in need. And the things that you need, no human being can give you. You need strength against temptation, which is much worse than poverty. You need his light in order to see where you're supposed to go, lest you go where you ought not. You need him to keep you from making a fool of yourselves, as many of the older people here would probably tell you they have done in days gone by. If you don't want to talk about such things to your parents, well, find one of these other men or women around here whom you admire and ask them if now that they have gained a little time and experience, ask them if they were your age, they would pray more than they did when they were your age. There will not be a single one who will not say, you had better believe it. Of all the things I needed to do when I was young, which I paid least attention to, it was prayer. And the other vice that young people are beset with, they would never imagine this, is the vice of sloth. Sloth, you must understand, is not common or garden laziness. Sloth, rather, is a certain distaste for the things of God and for the things of the Spirit. Few young people can be described as lazy in that they have lots of energy and they have more places to go than they have time or money to get there. They have superabundant time and energy for those things which they want but they don't have the energy or the time for prayer. They cannot seem to squeeze this into their busy schedules. And if I say things that just happen to be applicable to grown-ups also, that is intentional. And so I tell you, young people, you need to slow down every day in time to pray. You have every day to find some time for prayer. And you have to speak to God as you do when you receive Christ in the Blessed Sacrament, in Holy Communion. That is where one learns at an early age to pray. When Jesus comes for a brief visit, and there are no pretensions in this communion. There is nothing ostentatious about it, Nothing that is apparently magnificent. It is the most basic of all your prayers. When Jesus comes to you and you tell him what is on your mind and on your heart and he speaks to your soul. I'm sure all of you have heard these public service announcements. They tell young people that if they need counseling, call this 800 number as quickly as possible. Somebody has the money to fund a phone number and someone on the other end of the line, whereby if you need to commit suicide, call this number first. And if you have a drug problem, call this number first. 
And if you have what is described euphemistically as a problem pregnancy, call this number first and we'll tell you how to murder it. And at the end of every one of these lines, someone should say to these desperate children, made desperate by our damnable government, which abominates God, whenever the phone rings, someone should say to the little child, no matter what age, do you pray? Have you gone with your problem to God? Are you so self-sufficient that you do not need him? Or are you so unique that he cannot help you? Are you so powerful that he has nothing to give you? And I assure you that if anyone goes to God, he gets 100% attention. He gets total sympathy and he gets most condescending and tender love. He gets everything he needs, although he does not always get everything he wants. I tell you, young people, therefore, in your need, in your loneliness, in your need to be appreciated and understood, go to him who made you, who knows you to the very fiber of your being, he knows everything that you're made of. He knows what you will be and where you will be a hundred thousand years from now. He knows it as really as he knows your name. I say therefore to you, if you have any need or if you have none, pray always. <laughs>